Hello there, my name is Isaac and I'm a tutor at CWI and this semester I'm working specifically with physics students, although if you ever have any math questions uh, feel free to ask me if you're unable to get a hold of, of your math tutor within a decent amount of time. So uh, today what we're going to talk about is start out with um, vector or scalar because it's honestly, it's firstly, it's there will always be a question on every test you have that will ask whether a certain unit or a certain concept is a is a vector or a scalar. And so what do we mean by a vector? So a vector, it points. So a vector has some, some amount of, of uh, direction to it, right? Um, but it also, like for example, um, imagine that me moving this way is a vector pointing that direction. But if I were to move faster, I would need a larger magnitude. So you know, when I'm walking slowly, maybe the vector is this long. When I walk twice as fast, the vector is twice as long. So a vector needs not only a direction to tell you where it is, it also needs a magnitude to tell you the quantity of what it is, um, whether that's twice the force, twice the displacement, uh, twice the velocity, whatever it is, you're going to need some sort of uh, magnitude to tell you what amount of velocity you have in what direction. Uh, where is it a scalar? A scalar is just a magnitude. It is just, it doesn't have any direction. It just is, right? And so um, a magnitude tells you the, like, um, I don't want to use the word intensity of something, but because uh, that has a specific definition. But let's get to some examples. So um, an example for a vector would be displacement. Displacement is, like for example, if I move from point A to point B, I will have a displacement vector that starts at point A and points towards point B. Same with velocity, if at point A, I had a velocity of a certain amount, that velocity vector will have a, a magnitude. So let's say that the velocity vector is four meters per second, right? So we're moving four meters per second in the direction from A to B. And so that would be a velocity vector. Um, similarly with acceleration, we'll kind of get more into this as, as uh, we get into some other chapters. Um, force is also, uh, it needs to have a direction. In other words, if I'm pushing on something, um, that something is going to be pushing back at me and I'm pushing on it in a certain direction. So force is also a vector. So anything that you can imagine that needs a direction to be valid is going to be a vector. All right, so let's look at some examples of scalars. And you'll notice some some funny similarities here. So examples for scalars are distance. Well, you might say, well, what's the difference between displacement and distance? So with displacement, we went from point A to point B. And so that is a vector, right? This, this vector displacement is sometimes labeled an X, an X vector or an R vector. And so X represents displacement, R can also represent displacement. Usually X is representative of displacement on the X axis, and R is representative of displacement on all three axes combined. So that's kind of the difference in use there. Well, let's go ahead and say that we, we have displacement as X, and this little, this little arrow on top is, is what makes it, it's what notates it as a vector for us so that we know what we can do and can't do with it based on the rules of how we deal with vectors. Well, distance, okay, so distance, let's say that the displacement vector was, uh, let's say it was three meters, and let's go ahead and stick with maybe something that we know at this point, north, south, east, west. Um, let's go ahead and say that this is um, at 40 degrees, north of east. So this is my direction, 40 degrees north of east, and this is my magnitude, 3 meters. Well, if I just write it like this, for example, so if I just write it as 
um, x equals 3 meters. You'll notice I don't have a vector sign over this because I've given no direction. I've only given a distance, right? A distance. The distance is the distance part of a vector without the direction. And sometimes how you'll see that written is, um, so x is equal to the magnitude of the x vector. So um, what we have here is our x vector and these two lines on either side, it's kind of like an absolute value, but there's one more line on either side. And what that represents is we are going to take this vector, but we're only going to use the magnitude. So the magnitude of this displacement vector is three meters, that's the distance. Sometimes you'll see people use D for distance, which makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, so that's the first one. Now very similarly, we have velocity and speed, and once again, it's a little baffling because we tend to use these as synonyms. We use these interchangeably. So let's go ahead and say with velocity, and it's very similar, the difference between the two. So with velocity, let's say you have some velocity vector, let's say it's four meters per second, and I need a direction, right? Because this is now, this is a vector. So let's, let's go at the same direction, uh, 40 degrees uh, north, of east. And so I've got my direction and I've got my um, I've got my magnitude. Well similarly speed doesn't speed is a scalar, right? So we're only taking the magnitude part of the velocity vector. So we're taking the magnitude of the velocity vector and that equals um, that equals just four meters per second. And sometimes you'll see People use S for that, um, S for speed. Um, oftentimes you'll just see a V without a vector uh, symbol on top. All right, so those are, the, those are the primary differences between displacement and distance and velocity and speed. These are simply the magnitudes of these. So both of these hold more information in them than these do. These only tell you a magnitude. These tell you a magnitude and what direction that magnitude is in. And another thing that might be good to cover is that in our three-dimensional uh, system, which classical mechanics is entirely based on, um, what we have is we have x, y, and z. And there's a little trick here. Uh, this is a, um, what would you call it? It's something that everybody conforms to. It's a convention. So when you take your hand at the X, so I'm pointing my fingers in the X direction, and I'm curling my fingers to the Y direction, my thumb is pointing in the Z direction. So if I, for example, put X here and Y here, I would be out of convention, because I'd start at the X, go to the Y, and Z should be down. So we always want to make sure to follow that convention so that people understand what we're doing. All right. so. Vectors. Let's let's draw a vector. Let's say that we have some vector uh, v, and we're going to go ahead and draw some dashed lines to help us figure out what its components are. Hopefully, this is a this drawing gets the point across. So as you can see, we have an amount in the z direction we have an amount in the x direction, and we have some amount in the y direction. So this three-dimensional vector is gonna have three components. Uh, v is going to be represented by some vector which has three components. Um, and I'm gonna teach you how to write this in a different way real quick, but for now, let's just use this, uh, this bracket here. So perhaps I'm going, um, let's say, four in the X, three in the Y, and five in the Z. So the way that you're gonna write this in class is you're gonna write it using what are called unit vectors. Unit vectors are always length one. They have a magnitude of one, and they are orthogonal to each other in a three-dimensional system. So what I mean by that is, is that I have my X unit vector, I have my y unit vector and I have my z unit vector. And because they're magnitude one, 
what is uh, one is the multiplicative identity, which means you can multiply by one and not change the actual magnitude of the thing you're multiplying it by. All you will do is give a guidance, you'll give a direction, right? Because these are vectors, they, they hold the information of the direction, of the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction, but they're only length one, so multiplying them changes nothing about our vector. So, some people will call these unit vectors x hat, y hat, and z hat. And then some people, like me, will call them i hat, j hat, and k hat. Both of these are acceptable as long as you know what you're doing. I think it makes a little more sense to just do x hat, y hat, z hat, but I've been doing this for so long now, it's just kind of the way I do things. Um, so let's go ahead and write it in the x hat, y hat, z hat um, standard. So. Uh, if we wanted to write this vector in the way that we're going to use in this class, we would say that v equals 4. Okay, so 4 was in the x direction. So let's go ahead and notate it with an x hat. And then we're going to go ahead and add 3. And 3 was in the y direction. So we're going to notate that with a y hat. And 5 was in the z direction. So we're going to go ahead and notate that with a z hat. So, you can't add these numbers together because they're in orthogonal dimensions, right? They're all 90 degrees from each other, and you can't add things that are 90 degrees to each other. Um, you can only add things that are in the same direction. Like when you think of the number line, the number line like 3 and 5 are all on the same line. So you can add 3 and 5 as scalars, but you cannot add any x hats to any y hats any y hats to any z hats, any z hats to any x hats. You can only add like hats. So you can only add, like let's say that I had another vector and I wanted to, so let's say this is vector one and then I've got a vector two that was three x hat, two y hat, and three z hat. And I wanted to take v1 plus v2 well, I could add only the like components. So 4 plus 3 is 7 x hat, 3 plus 2 is 5 y hat, and 5 plus 3 is 8 z hat. And so this is how we add vectors. And it's very that's why it's very important that we know the difference between a vector and a scalar. Because scalars, you can add any amount of scalars to each other. Um, but when you add vectors together, there are certain rules that must be followed. You can only add like terms. One more quick thing about vectors. Let's keep this vector up here. Um, can scalars operate, well, can scalars multiply to vectors? So can we take a product between a scalar and a vector? And the answer is yes. So we know we can take um, products of scalars and scalars, like 3 times 4 is 12. Um, we will learn ways to take products of vectors and vectors, but it's just totally wacky and it's way different than the multiplication we've learned up to this point. And we'll cover that later on. Um, but we can multiply scalars and vectors. We can do a product between scalar and vector. So let's say that I have some scalar 4 and I'm multiplying it by my vector v1 that I have up here, v1. And remember, don't write it this way. This is a different notation. In this class, you'll write it with the hat system. All right, so let's say I want to take 4 times v1. Let's write that a little differently. Let's write the whole vector in here in parentheses. 4x hat plus 3y hat plus 5z hat. So the great thing about scalars is they do just that. They scale things. They scale vectors, too. So if you can imagine, if we're going to scale this vector v1 by 4, that means that we're going to take v1 and we're going to stack it on itself four times in the direction that that vector has. So we're actually scaling it by 4. Well, how do we do that? Well, all we do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to distribute the 4 to each component term. So we're going to distribute the 4 to the x hat, to the y hat, z hat, and we'll find that 
4 times v1 for this specific case is 16x hat plus 12y hat plus 20 vx. So I hope this was helpful. I threw a lot into this video. I didn't expect to get this far. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and uh, I'll see you next video.